because her father said no that um, like even if I'm fully motivated to not if, even all of that is just nothing in front of like I can't will it to go away or I can't or even if I'm even if I have the best intention for me to not get caught in I mean, it you can't wish it to go away let's put it that way will is a bigger topic <laughs> Will is a bigger topic because all of this somewhere is a sacrifice of our what we think is our will to God's will, which is actually our true will. So at one level we can will it to go away because our true will is God's will. But it is because my individuality, my egotistical will seems to be paramount. We don't see yet God's will as my will. And mostly we don't have the patience to wait for his will to become clear because many times in spirituality we are okay if my will sounds spiritual enough, like it sounds like it could be his will, then we can rush into that. But that is not enough. Our individual wanting, our individual grasping has to be replaced by patience and allow him to move us, to allow him to guide us. Maya is very powerful. But it is not powerful enough to keep us away from God if we really wanted to. If we really wanted to be with Him. It is not that powerful that it can keep us away. So in that moment, who leaves? God leaves or we leave? We succumb to that temptation. Isn't it? But... Um, but as we try to strengthen this aspect of ourselves and as we deepen in our love for God, it becomes, well, mostly, we can never say generally, but mostly easier to stay with Him and not give Him to the mind's uh, calling, the mind's temptation. In that moment, we must forget that Ram, Krishna, Jesus, Allah lives in our heart. It's very, it's impossible to say, yes, he lives here, but anyway, I will focus on the me instead or focus on the mind instead. So it is this forgetting which is the effect of Maya. And the more you deepen in your love for God, in your relationship with God, the more His presence will be a certainty which you will find it more and more difficult to forget. And like I said, there are only two modes for one who has been to satsang. One is to notice the presence and be with it. And the second is to know because your teacher told you that God lives there and to remain inward facing. So you're sitting in satsang, the mind says, what about pizza? You're able to let it go because you've made this time available to God, to satsang. 
it's a rare temptation where you feel like okay when it comes you make some excuse and say i'm not well i have to go home or something like that no? but those are rare because you've already committed your time to this in the same way our life has to be committed time for god and for a while it will seem like a big sacrifice but it actually isn't it is the only way to lead a life which is worth it so we are sacrificing our life actually without realizing it but for a while to sacrifice the false will seem like a true sacrifice you know even 